Hi, everyone. This is Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister. It's been a little while. I was just in Texas for a week, and I uh, had quite an experience there, actually, that I'd like to share with you. It doesn't exactly deal with Bitcoin, or doesn't really exactly deal with Baltimore either. But there's a lesson to be learned from what happened to me in Texas. Um, and it deals with freedom, I guess. Anyway, the Texas economy is just booming, by the way. And I'm sure this has something to do with the lack of taxes and regulation that's going on down there. So if you're if you're desperate for a job, but they're hiring a lot of people down there. I mean, it's like, it's hot though in Houston. It's hot. And just Houston was just booming, especially $1.81 gas. Anyway, I went all around Austin, San Antonio, and I decided to go down to Brownsville. And take note, I did not have my passport with me, so I could not leave the country. I was driving a rental car, and I went to Brownsville. It wasn't very exciting. I took some photos, and then I, I drove back up. I was going to go to Corpus Christi, Corpus Christi next. And... I am. I get to the get to Sarita, which is about 100 miles north of the Mexican border, in Texas. And there is a checkpoint, a federal checkpoint, inside of the United States of America, operated by the border control, uh, border patrol. You know, and I had I had heard something about this before uh, on Alex Jones. I I'm not a avid listener or watcher of his program I think he's wrong an incredible amount of the time and he exaggerates all sorts of things um, he can be on sometimes and in this case he ended up being quite correct about these internal internal federal checkpoints papers please type things so uh, I get to this checkpoint and you can look, you can actually Google this, you can YouTube this, and you'll see that other people have made videos about it too. Um, most of them are from the Texas area. I'm, I'm from Baltimore, if you don't know me, so this is going to be from a little bit different perspective. And for the people who do know me, you'll see that everything that Alex Jones and all those people you might think are freaks are talking about, um, it's true. Um, this was a Nazi Soviet style checkpoint where. Um, I pulled up, and they set a dog on your car to smell your car, and they said, you're going to have to pull over there. And and I was like, what? And they said, you know what this is about? I said, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know what this is about. They're like, this, the dog has smelled drugs on your car, and now we have uh, you know probable calls to search your car. Do you have any weapons? Where are you going? Where are you coming from? All these questions. Do you have drugs? Have you been smoking marijuana in your car? So let me clarify one thing. I do not smoke marijuana, and I don't think you should smoke marijuana. It's it's just bad for your brain. I'm a health nut, as everyone knows, and um, I'm quite a, I guess, libertarian too, and, but I've never really given an, an opinion about the legalization of marijuana and all that. I try to stay out of that type of thing, but I, I will... But I didn't have marijuana on me. I don't smoke marijuana. Obviously, someone who had rented the car before me had smoked marijuana. The dog had smelled the marijuana. Or whatever, whoever rented the, the car, whatever they had left in the car, you know, the scent the dog smelled. So I pull over. They um, ask, you know, can I frisk you? Do you have any weapons? Again, do you have drugs? Do you throw your marijuana out the window? I mean, just crazy stuff. So, you know, to get this over with, I'm like, sure, frisk me. So they frisk me for weapons. I obviously have no weapons. I have no drugs. And they like, go sit over there. Go sit in this room. It was air conditioned in the room. The guy asked for my ID, my Maryland license. He writes down, types in all of my information into a computer. Um, and they said, it's only going to be five minutes. I, I, there was another guy in there, a, a Border Patrol guy. He was from Buffalo. We talked about Buffalo and Baltimore. Um, but eventually, he went away. They, they pulled over. Uh, they they got it, made a Mexican guy get out and sit next to me. They were really interested in him because he didn't have the proper papers. And they sort of forgot about me. Now, 
at this point I look behind me and I see there's a lot of other rooms behind in, in glass there are all these Mexican women in there that they've detained also and I'm thinking to myself I'm like I don't want to end up in there I mean that's like one step further from the road I mean and what's taking so long with my car I so said 20 minutes have gone by and I, I the guy from Buffalo comes back in again I ask him you know what's up with my car he didn't even know what was up with my car seemed like no one knew what was up with my car at that point I wait another five minutes and I ask again hey you know my car what's going on with my car and by the way they knew it was a rental car too they said right away is this a rental car this is a rental car they knew um, and so one of the guys said, hey calm down man calm down I mean and come on I've been detained in the United States by federal workers just be I mean because my my car smelled like marijuana a dog told the workers to do this so they're like oh yeah your car is fine go go get it so I go get my car it doesn't even look like they searched my car at all I think it was just sitting there the entire time they probably popped the trunk maybe looked under the wheel I don't know it seemed like it was all a game to them they didn't care more about the Mexican in his papers which is great who cares the point in all this is that there's a border they do the same thing at the border why are they harassing United States citizens within the United States? A total violation of our Fourth Amendment rights. You know, asking for your, you know, papers, please. It's a Nazi Soviet thing to do. And one of, the, you know, one of the agents said was like, I also said to them at one point, they, when they asked me like five different times, do you smoke marijuana in, in different ways? I said, I'm 38 years old. I don't smoke weed, man. And they're like, well, we've had, uh, we've pulled over people, old people that are 60, 65 years old because of mar medical marijuana they had on them. And they seem proud of this. Like, I mean, it's a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace. And I was pretty, you know, I drove away afterwards. I was glad to be out of there. I was glad I didn't have to call a lawyer. <laughs> I mean, how about if the guy who rented the car behind me had stashed some coke in there and never took it out? I would have been screwed, totally screwed. Because of this illegal, I mean, it's an illegal, it's an illegal checkpoint. And I'll give links to it. Again, you can Google it. These it exist a hundred miles from the border. So, this Sarita checkpoint has now made me a completely pro legalization advocate. Now, now again, and and, and not just legalization of marijuana. I don't want the. It should be unregulated completely. If you want to grow it in your backyard, be my guest. It, that's that's my policy now I think marijuana is horrible I don't think you should smoke it but guess what we shouldn't be screwing around pulling over American citizens messing with them just because of this war on marijuana or whatever their excuse is and it just think about it, 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 it these guys wouldn't have jobs if it weren't for marijuana being illegal and again, I urge everyone to urge people not to smoke marijuana. Church groups, religious organizations, um, I mean, if the government wants to urge people not to smoke marijuana, that's their business too. I don't think we should be wasting money on, on paying for billboards, the government. If pri I, I urge everyone not to smoke marijuana. But it should be legal. And this incident, this incident just further solidified my belief that the government has overreached on so many things so many things and that the American public is clueless to what is going on again a, a, an internal checkpoint where they ask for your ID papers please like you're in Soviet Russia or Nazi Germany and then it, if they find something suspicious they get to screw with you for a half an hour so Bitcoin again is a non-governmental uh, form of money I think everyone should invest, get, buy some still um, I'll talk more about Baltimore and Bitcoin in my future videos uh, I'm Adam Meister Bitcoin Meister yeah, subscribe to this YouTube channel go to BaltimoreHourly.com see you later